It was mid-July of 2009, in the thick of summer, when I began noticing something was wrong. At first, it was just a subtle discomfort, a tingle of unease when I looked in the mirror. But then it grew stronger, and soon my reflection was gone, replaced by a woman. She wore a long white gown, her face a ghastly mask of pallid skin marred by swollen, pulsing boils. Her hair hung down past her shoulders, dripping like strands of dark silk, framing eyes that stared straight into mine, hollow and endless. She seemed to watch me with a mixture of sorrow and hunger, and her presence clung to me like a shadow that seeped into my very bones. Every time I looked into the mirror, I saw her instead of me, I tried to convince myself it was just a trick of the mind, but I knew she was real. She wasn't outside of me. She was inside me. I kept this terror to myself. My parents would never believe me. One night after dinner, I went to bed early, hoping for rest before helping my mom sell her crafts at the carnival the next day. But as I was drifting off, I sensed something, someone, standing by my bed. I opened my eyes to see two women, both in black dresses with long dark hair and eerily serene smiles. One stood at my feet, watching me intently. The other was by my side, her eyes filled with a sinister kindness. I blinked, certain it was just my imagination, and closed my eyes tightly. But I couldn't shake the feeling that they were still there, lingering like shadows in the dark. When morning came, everything felt wrong. It was as if I'd been trapped in a thorny maze, my spirit bound and tangled, with a distant light I couldn't reach. My body felt foreign, heavy, like someone else was pulling my strings from the inside. I tried to shake it off, to return to normal, but nothing worked. When my mom came in to wake me, I just stared at her blankly, feeling like a stranger in my own skin. My dad tried next, but it was as if I'd vanished, leaving only an empty shell behind. Days passed, and I felt myself slipping away, spiraling deeper into something dark and unholy. I became vicious, lashing out at my family, avoiding church, and locking myself away. Then one night, one of the women in black returned, this time whispering, we need your body. Our master has chosen you to live through. She called me the perfect host, her voice sweet and sickly, like rotting honey. This nightmare continued for days until one night, my mom asked me to do the dishes. I glared at her with an anger that wasn't mine and stormed off to my room. She followed me pleading, why are you acting this way? This isn't you? In that moment, I crumbled. I broke down in a horrific, desperate scream. Mom, help me, please help. I can see the light, but I can't reach it. The thorns, they're tearing me apart. My father rushed in, ready to scold me, but my mom stopped him, her face twisted with terror. She's not herself, she whispered. Something else has taken over. She urged my dad to call the pastor, her voice barely a whisper as she begged the unseen women to release me. When the pastor arrived, I felt an icy wave wash over me, and my skin turned a ghostly shade of pale. In a voice not my own, I recounted everything. The mirror, the boils, the women. He prayed over me, his voice strong and unwavering, driving the spirits from my body with every word. Slowly, I felt the warmth return, my spirit settling back into my skin. I was drained but safe, grateful to see my family standing over me. But it wasn't over. The very next day, one of the women appeared again, glaring at me from my bedroom door. I ignored her, knowing I was safe. But each night, she returned angrier than before. Then two years later, in 2011, I thought it was finally over. I'd stopped seeing her, stopped fearing mirrors. But one night, I had a nightmare unlike any before. Two children appeared by my bedside, their faces decayed and hollow, 
skin rotted and twisted. They told me they'd come to take me to hell to live with their mother, the woman I'd banished from the mirror. They grabbed me, their bony fingers ice cold as they tried to pull me down into darkness. I fought, thrashing against them, but their grip tightened. Just as they began to drag me away, a soft, haunting melody broke through the shadows. It was a hymn, Tsui Yaxus Lub NP, the Christian song my mom always sang. As it reached the hallelujah refrain, the children screamed and recoiled. One vanished, but the other clung to me, his gaze fierce with hate. But then the voice grew louder, and the last child let go, disappearing into the darkness. I woke up trembling, shaken to my core, knowing that while I'd escaped, it was only for now. They were still out there, waiting in the shadows, watching. And someday I knew they'd come back to reclaim me.